It is a great pleasure to be with you today. Thank you for joining this workshop sponsored by ViewerWorks. We're going to invent the magic of BWX and find out some of the greatest AI-powered features. I'm Head of Partnerships at ViewerWorks and PhD candidate at the Onion University, passionate about translation technology and AI translation. My main hat is AI language solution specialist and MTP trainer. With Lucia Guerrero, we are the founders of the Gala MTP Training SIG, and with the synergy of all Gala members, we managed to make available to the industry the MTP Training Protocol with the sites from the industry. Today, in our workshop, we're going to explore the magic world of PWX, but most importantly, we will check how things work in practice, how to set up BWX, how to build a project and the basic workflow, how to use the editor and the features. From the practice, we will go back to the theory and we will discuss the current challenges of post-editing AI translation. I will share with you some tips from efficient post-editing and we will have the time to check how was your experience with post-editing AI in an innovative interface. Let's start our journey with a short story and some high. ViewerWorks is a translation technology provider based in California. Our CEO, Gabriel Furman, is a translator himself and has all the experience of the challenges that translators and LSPs face. Many people ask, is BWX DMS, ATM, NMT or an editor? It is a cloud-based translation management system combining the automations of a management system with the best features of generative AI integrated within the tool. This combination is what made BWX the winner of the Process Innovation Challenge at Lockwood 50, and in spite of being a cloud-based system, it can support the benefits of Gen AI in a secure framework. So what makes BWX so special? What are the BWX AI generative language engine capabilities? Can BWX AI generative language engine detect translation errors? In a way, BWX MELS is working with semantic verifier, which can detect if something smells fishy in the translation. This means that you can get warnings and have the time to react. It is a very useful assistant while you are the decision maker. Can be WX AI fix tags? And what if we had the tool that could also fix tags? Have you been in a situation with a scanned PDF of bad quality that has been OCR'd and imported into a CAD tool? Ghost tags, corrupted tags, tags everywhere is what we can get. And this becomes a nightmare, not to mention that in the end, you may have no deliverable. With one click and the AI power, fix tags is our PWX feature that makes your day. Can BWX AI generative language engine add terms on the fly? What translators would like to be able to manage easily is terminology. With BWX, we add terms on the fly. The tool uses deep learning. GUI become the teachers of the tool and the tool learns with us. And it is not only about terminology. With one click, we add the terms to the glossary and at the same time, the terms update the TM and the whole document. Full consistency with dynamic learning. Let's talk now about quality or error annotation. This is what your exercise was about. How could an editor assist us with an LQA or with translation quality? BWX has the power to efficiently categorize the errors. You may see the error categories on this slide. 
preferential not improving fluency, preferential improving fluency, incorrect translation, fluency, terminology, grammar. With our BWX quality professor, we avoid over editing and under editing in translations and provide coaching to the translator. Can BWX AI provide automatic evaluation with BWX quality professor? Yes, you saw that in practice. This means that in the end of the revision step, not only do we have the errors categorized, but we can also use the automation of the system to evaluate our translators. Next time that we will have a similar project, the system will automatically suggest the vendor with a higher scoring based on the previous revision tasks. Now, you will tell me, this works with AI and ChatGPT 3.5 and 4 are integrated. What about AI translation ethics and confidentiality? There is no reason to worry about as it is SOC 2 Type 2 certified and your data is 100% secure. If you would like to find out more about our innovative tech, you can follow my AI Translation Lab newsletter on LinkedIn and have fun with the analogies and the research shared. And it is not only the setup that is really simple. You can build your project and basic workflow in three steps. Project management happens on the fly. Let's check this video. To set up your project in BWX interface, let's go through the basic steps. Go to settings and you can go to LLMs. You can see that you have two options available, machine translation and LLMs. If we go to LLMs, we just need to make sure that we have turned on the enable augmented translation actions, which refers to alternative suggestion, proofreading, review assessment, smells and fixed tags, which are the basic AI powered actions of BWX. Once we complete this setup, then we can go to people and here we can add the users. The term user in BWX refers to a vendor, a client or a manager, whoever is involved in the TMS. Now, by default, the user is going to be you. Now we're ready to go and set up the organization level. As an example, a client is an organization. For the purposes of this demo, we have created demo organization. And here you can see tabs like associations, prices, hierarchy view and empty settings. Let's go to hierarchy view. Here you see the organization is demo organization and the organizational unit is demo unit. All your assets, TM, MT, glossaries, AI features are set up at the organization unit level. For example, your client is demo organization, a department of your client may be demo unit, but the same client may have the same organizational unit. So it may, they may have the same name, but everything is set up at the organizational unit. So you go to organizational units, then you go to demo unit, and here you can set up the prices, the translation settings, the translation memory, the glossaries, machine translation, segmentation, AI, and many other features. What is of our interest is to go to translation settings and check that we have auto translate from AI translation, translation memory, and machine translation. Of course, you can work only with translation memory, only with machine translation, only with AI translation, or with a combination of any of these. And you can select if you want to show machine translation suggestion in the editor, if you want to translate empty segments only, translate not confirmed segments only, complete task once all segments are confirmed, and many, many more. If I go to TM, 
I can see the TM which is connected to this project. So I'm going to use demo TM. Make sure that you have read and write activated. Otherwise, you will not be able to check the results of the TM when you reach the editor. The same goes for the glossaries. Make sure that you have the demo glossary activated for this project or you can create a new one. If you want to change anything in the translation memory settings, then you go to demo, you click on it, you go to actions and you edit the languages, for example, for this specific translation, translation memory of the demo organization. And then you click the save button. Now let's go back and we are ready to create our project. So I go to new project and I drag and drop my file. You will see that this is processed and from the drop down menu, I can select if I want to extract the terms from the source content based on different criteria. I will not use this for the purpose of this demo. So I continue with the next step and here I have to create my project by filling out these details. In the organizational unit, I go and select demo unit. For the contact person, I select myself. For the project reference, I give a name to the project. So this could be like demo for Elia. Then I can choose the search language, Spanish. Be careful with the locale. So here I want plain Spanish and the target language is going to be English. And I want to choose English United States. So what you see is that because we have set up a specific translation memory and glossary for this organizational unit, these fields of translation memory and glossaries are pre-selected. For this demo, I'm ready to go with continue. So now I can select this file and I can create my project after checking that I have the workflow that I would like to have. I can have translation, review, regional approval or whatever else it may be. For this one, I'm going to select translation only and I'm going to delete the rest of them and I click create. So here I am with my translation workflow and if I had a price list, probably I would see here, like I do, the cost. I see the progress and I see a due date. Now, I select this, it is pending and I need to approve the project to be able to open the editor. So to approve the project, if my code is approved by my client, I click approve project and I give a reason like good God and confirm. So this turns the project into approved and I can go and select the project. The editor opens. In three steps, you have your project set up. Once you have done so, you should find yourself in the magic land of the BWX editor. And I'm ready to show you all the amazing features in a short journey. Let's check the following video. So once your project is set up, we're ready to go with how to post edit in the BWX editor. So first you go to projects and you go to the filter. So you want to find the project that we have created. For your exercise, we created the workshop project. So you just type workshop project, enter and the project will appear below. So you click on the workshop project and you can see that this project has two steps, translation and review. 
The translation has been completed in purpose because what we would like you to do would be to go to the editor and annotate the errors of the empty output or AI translation output. So this means that at the translation step, we did not correct any output. We just confirmed all the segments and we went to the review step. So now I'm going to open the review step to check together all the features and how to post edit in BWX editor. So let's explore a little bit the interface. We have the source column, the target column, and we have the preview of the document below these two columns. On the right side, I can see the comments, I can see the suggestions, and to have the suggestions displayed, I need to go into the field of the translation output. So I go into the segment and I can see the results appearing in the suggestion. I have AI translation, machine translation, or a term coming from the glossary. So if I want to apply instead of machine translation, AI translation, then I can go here and say AI translation, ask AI to translate. And this is going to be translated by AI. Then I can double click and I can get the result in the field. If I want to use MT, I just click the MT result. Then the other tabs are instructions in case we have any instructions coming with my project, then I have the QA and then I have the search. So I can search in the TM and I can find any term or it is like the concordance search where you can search any word you want. You can go to the glossary you can type a term and try to find it in the glossary or you can go to the filter where you have source and target and you can use the metadata filters to find confirmed segments, locked, repetition and anything else you have available here. Then you can use the find and replace translated segments if you want to have massive changes. If you go to the translation changes tab, you can see all the changes made by the user on specific date and time. And if we go to the document, we can see some details about this document, but we can also set up our preferences. So we can enable the spell check, enable AI translation, enable translation smells, or you can just go and change the translation smells language from the default to your target language if you wish. And this is something that we're going to explain later. In the viewing preferences, you can have inline or you can have columns. You can show the white spaces, you can have expanded tags, you can have night mode if you are a night person or day mode if you are a day person. So you can set up your preferences here. So after checking the basic interface of the editor, I go back to the suggestions window and I can now explain the whole mindset of the editor and how to post edit in BWX. So the idea is not anymore only about machine translation. By editing, I may have a static workflow coming from machine translation, or I may have a dynamic output coming from AI translation. What is the difference? Machine translation is static. It's a result coming from the training of engines with specific data that I, we have fed them with. Opposite. AI translation comes from LLMs, from large language models. We don't know exactly what are the data that are used there because it is a large amount of them. 
so we cannot predict what is going to be the output. In addition to this, we have deep learning which works in parallel. And while we're translating and post-editing in this interface, the system learns our style while we are typing. So if we have 10 different users working on the same document, they're going to have different results. So it is us shaping the data. It is us training the engine and the system learns from us and adapts to our preferences. This is a basic difference between machine translation output and AI translation output. AI translation works more with our thinking and less with our typing. So let's see some features. You can see that I have some words highlighted. These are terms. We can add terms on the fly. We can just click and we can add the term in the glossary. Let me show you how. You can go to data and use control C to copy this. Then we go to datos, we add the term, we copy paste this and then save. And this term is successfully added to our glossary. It is as simple as that, but it is more powerful than that. Meaning that while you are adding the terms in the glossary, the system learns and it's going to apply the same output of term, the same translation of this term to the next segments. Now, if you go to the segment, for example, 17, and you decide to change the term, let's say that you want to change the term here, you can do it because then this term is going to update it and in the translation memory, in the glossary, and in all the previous segment of this text, in all the next segments of this text. So you don't have to worry about the consistency of your terminology. You don't have any more fuzzy matches. These are automatically corrected by AI. And this is an important thing. So when you work with AI translation combined with MT, then you have full consistency in your document thanks to deep learning. Now, let's see some more features because we're working with AI powered features. If you go here and you click in the segment, you will realize that we have PWX augmented actions. These actions are amazing assistants. So let's go, for example, to segment number four. And let's say that I delete these tags and I have a document with corrupted tags. So with just one click, I ask the AI powered action to fix the tags and the tags are going to be in place. Imagine if you have a case of a document with hundreds of tags and you have the option to place them directly. So this burden goes off the translators. Now, a second thing is that maybe you would like to check the spelling, but it's not only about the spelling. For example, let me change this to generality. Generality is a real word, so probably this would not be caught by a spell checker. However, when we use the editor in BWX, and we ask check smells to do a check here, we receive a translation error. Check smells is what we said. It is a semantic verifier, so it goes one level deeper in the translation and checks the semantics. So the term Reglamento General de Protección de Datos has been incorrectly translated as Generality Data Protection Regulation. The correct translation should be General Data Protection Regulation. So you see that this warning saves your life here. Now, how can I proofread and correct this directly? You just use the proofread and the automatic proofreading 
is going to correct to general data protection regulation. So you have at the same time spell checking and translation smells running. Now, let's say that I would like to have an alternative suggestion, but I don't want to leave the interface and go to OpenAI because this is a secure environment. So let's go, for example, to segment number four and let's ask for an alternative suggestion. And we're waiting to see a result for this segment. So your translation is accurate and does not require any improvements. This is one case. Let's go and ask the same thing for a bigger segment. So here, let's ask for an alternative suggestion. We ask AI and it's going to come back with an alternative suggestion and the semantic verifier is going to create a sort of semanticpedia. So here you have an alternative suggestion followed by the explanation. The phrase it is a part of was changed to it is a component of to provide a more precise description of the subject's role within the data protection reform. So this is a very interesting feature and AI works here as an assistant. The important thing is that you are the decision makers in this process. You are the one person who is going to decide if you go with the alternative suggestion or with any other suggestion by the AI translation features. So last thing that I would like to show you after having checked alternative suggestion, proofread, check smells and fix tags is something related to the review states we discussed and as you did in your exercise, we said about how to annotate the errors and how to use the automated feature to categorize the errors in BWX. So for example, here we have an incorrect translation directly highlighted by the AI. The translation incorrectly includes the placeholders in the translated text. The review translation removes these placeholders and provides the correct translation of European Union within the sentence. So AI not only categorizes the errors, but it also gives us an explanation. Now, I may not use this categorization, but I may go with something else. So here I can go with preferential, did not prove fluency, for example, and then I can type my own comment and then I can mark it as reviewed. The result is going to be that if I do this for the whole document, I'm going to be able to export an LQA report semi-automated with my supervision that is going to provide feedback to the translator a score for the translator who has worked on this project and the system will directly suggest for the next time the translator with the highest score for this specific use case and language pair. I can also use it for the annotation of errors and this will help me to create style guides for translators or machine translation post-editing or AI translation post-editing protocols and this is how I can justify the rates of translators by showing them what are the errors produced by a specific engine or a specific system. So this is more or less the features of BWX in the editor. And I'm going to share with you more tips about how to post edit AI translation. I hope you enjoyed the journey in the editor. What are the challenges of the AI translation era? The definition, what is finally post-editing? Correction, editing, revision, shaping data, and how can we measure the quality of the output? How can the payment be defined in an ethical way? Are translators going to be replaced and why should we invest in training? Post-editing is for sure 
based on the ISO 18587, the correction of machine translation or AI translation output to an extent to get a deliverable as per the quality agreed with the client. As we know, so far the quality is measured by the number of edits. This is not probably be the case of AI translation, where the quality is going to be measured based on the cognitive effort of the translator, which means that we will be led to a new compensation model and probably to a solution for all the stakeholders which will bridge the gap between translators and LSPs and will finally answer the question, are translators here to stay? Yes because no human is comparable to an engine, and it is as simple as that. When referring to AI translation, we're talking about a combination of machine translation and large language models output. This means that the model is not any more static. It is a dynamic paradigm in which data flow. Translators needs to have a strategy and be able to shape the data, to teach the system and train the engine based on his decision-making and strategic thinking. The real challenge is that the translator is not anymore focusing on typing, but on the essence of these cognitive resources to perform the translation. In reality, AI translation addresses a challenge by revealing the real value of the translator in the process, not the typing, but the thinking, not the typing time, but the thinking time and effort. What are the common errors of post editors? Stylistic preferential changes, under-edited translations and over-edited translations. And here we have the solution solved by BWX Quality Professor. In consistent terms, inconsistent style and register, unlocalized or incorrect acronyms, and this is solved by add terms on the fly. Unlocalized text, ignorance of false cognates, errors on the structural level, machine translation is. And this is solved by BWX check smells, untranslated, added or omitted words, typos and grammar. And this is solved by BWX proofreading. So what are the tips for efficient post-editing? Do correct grammar, syntax, semantics and punctuation. Ensure that content has no omissions or additions. Ensure all tags are correctly placed and retain as much empty output as possible using your keyboard and shortcuts for ergonomics. Don't hesitate to long over a problem. Don't worry if style is repetitive and don't make preferential changes. Use empty suggestions if a large piece of the sentence is correct, the raw empty quality is very good with only minor corrections needed, the raw empty quality is not so good but still faster to correct it, and the empty has correct meaning. Don't use empty if the raw empty doesn't make any sense, you need more than a few seconds to understand it, and there are errors requiring a rearrangement of most of the text. Let's summarize the benefits. What did we learn today? BureauWorks is a solution combining TMS, CAT tool, TM, glossary, AI native integration at an affordable price. By using BWX, you can centralize your TMs and glossaries, boost your productivity, and cover your translation projects from main to Z with codes, payables, receivables, invoicing efficiently and successfully. Translation management becomes easy. Codes are generated automatically. Translation management becomes faster with centralized knowledge management, integrated MT engines, automated QA checks, and live project tracking. Translations become faster with integrated chat GPT and AI powered features. You have uncanny preview capabilities with code, web, video, document and preview, a Gen AI assistant, a way to fix tags in one click, and full consistency in your deliveries. 
while invoicing happens automatically to save you time. Our focus is not on innovation for innovation. Our focus is on placing humans and translators at the center of the translation process and serve the translation industry with innovative solutions for a better future. And all this magic comes at a competitive rate. You may explore our plans on our website. We hope you enjoyed the journey today. Bear in mind that we are open to discussion. Your feedback matters. Take the time to fill out the form I shared with you for a constructive feedback. The results of the survey will be shared with you anonymously on the social media. And start your trial. If the tool makes you happy, we're even happier. And because you are going to have many questions, feel free to reach out to me to schedule your tailored to your needs working session with your documents, your TLs and your glossaries. It is all about you. Thank you very much for attending. Feel free to contact me.